Back in September, I delivered a session to the Vancouver Power BI and Modern Excel user group. The topic was cube functions in Excel. If you missed the session, I'll put a link to the recording in the description. A question was posted into the YouTube comments of that video asking about the difference between children and members in the cube set function. And although I provided a brief answer as the reply in the comments, I think a video would help put some meat on the bones, so to speak. And that's what this video aims to do. For this video to make sense, you'll need to have an understanding of the data model in Excel and what cube functions are used for. I'm not going to go over that in this video, I'm going to go straight into answering the question. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the practice files from the link in the description below. I'm working in the file called Excel Members Children 1. Imagine that I'm building a sales report or a sales dashboard. The data for the report isn't stored in the worksheet cells, it's stored in the data model. So if I click on Power Pivot and then Manage, that will open up the data model. There is one table in the data model, it's called Sales YTD, Sales Year to Date, and each row in the table refers to a sales transaction for a company that makes and sells ice cream. We have quite a number of columns there, but the ones that are key to this demo are the revenue column and the country sold to column. So I'm going to close down the data model and return to Excel. In B1 on the dashboard, I've created a drop down list that contains a list of countries. In B2, I've entered a formula that displays the total revenue for the country selected in B1. The list in B1, if I just return to it, also has an all option. Selecting this displays the revenue for all countries. In other words, it adds up the values in the revenue column from the table in the data model. To create the dropdown, I used data validation. The values for the dropdown are coming from column B in the notes sheet. Did I type those values in directly? No, I didn't. I linked column B to the country sold to column in the data model. And that way, if we sell to more countries, the list in column B and therefore the drop down list will be updated automatically. And this is where cube functions come in. Cube functions are Excel functions that are used to pull data from the data model into the worksheet. In A1 of the note sheet, I've used the cube set function. What this function does is it looks at the country sold to column in the sales YTD table that's in the data model of the current workbook. It grabs all the values that are in that column, in other words, the names of the countries, and it stores one instance of each country in A1. Cube set doesn't display the country names. They are just stored internally in, in this case, cell A1. The cube set function has a third optional argument. If you exclude that argument, the cell will appear to be empty, even though behind the scenes it does contain data. So rather than leaving A1 appearing to be empty, I've set the third argument as the word items, and that's what's displayed in the cell. So that third argument is simply a way not to leave the cell looking empty. In A2, I've used the cube set count function to count how many items are returned by the cube set function in A1. And in B1, I used the cube ranked member function. This takes the values that are stored in A1 and displays them down column B. The cube ranked member function references the cube set count function in A2. As I said, if you're not familiar with cube functions, I suggest that you watch the recording of the session. Now, going back to A1, you can see in the formula that I've used members, but you can also use children. And that was the question that was asked 
what's the difference between members and children? When you use members in the formula, in addition to the individual items from the specified column, country sold to in this example, Excel automatically generates an all option. However, if I edit the formula and change members to children, so I'll do that now, change the word members to children and press enter, I no longer have an all option in column B which means the drop-down list, if I go back to the dashboard, the drop-down list in B1 doesn't have an all option anymore. It looks like it does, but that is the value that was already in B1. If I change that to France and then click the drop-down again, the all option has gone. So it looks like the only difference is that with members, you get all as the first item in the list, but with children, you don't. However, that's not strictly true, as you'll find out if you stick with me through the next example. I've now switched to the file called Excel Members Children 2. There's a table of data in the data model, which I'll show you in a minute. And there's also some cube functions in this worksheet. So it's a very similar setup to the previous demo. So if I click on Power Pivot Manage, that will open up the data model. If we look at the data in the data model of this file, not only do we have country, but we also have region and city. There are three regions, EMEA, Americas and Asia Pac. Each region has a number of countries associated with it. Each country includes several cities, which are the locations where this company has an ice cream factory. So we could say that this data has a multi-level structure to it. Level one is region, level two is country, level three is city. In data modeling, we call this a hierarchy. Right now, the hierarchy is theoretical, but within Power Pivot, there's a way to create a physical hierarchy. Once you have a physical hierarchy, it opens up additional possibilities when it comes to analyzing your data. So I'm going to create a physical hierarchy and then show you how it can be used in Excel. I need to click the diagram view button up on the ribbon in Power Pivot and then right click in the header area for the table called Sales YTD and select Create Hierarchy. I need to give the hierarchy a name. I could leave it as Hierarchy 1, but I'm going to change its name to Location and then I'm going to drag the columns that I need within that hierarchy in the order I want them. So level one is region. I'll just drop that on location. Level two is country. Drop that below region and level three is city. You can actually expand and contract the hierarchy just by clicking that little arrowhead there. Then I'll close the data model. Now, there are many reasons for creating hierarchies inside your data model. For example, it can make it easier to create pivot tables where you want to include columns from a multi-level hierarchy. But this demo is really about cube functions. So let's get back to that. Suppose I need to populate the drop-down list, which is in D1. And I want to show a list of all the countries in a specific region, let's say EMEA. The drop down is getting its values from the list in column B. So if I click the drop down, you can see at the moment it is a full list of countries because it's just getting the values from what's already in column B. I'll amend the formula that's in A1 and that will update the list that's in column B. So if I go to A1 and edit the formula, instead of sales YTD, dot country sold to, I'm going to change that to be sales YTD dot location, just double click on location from this list, dot region, which I need to type in myself. That goes in square brackets, dot EMEA, which also goes in square brackets, 
and the dot children is already in there. So what this formula is doing is getting the items that are the children of EMEA in the hierarchical structure. EMEA is a value in the region column and region is a top level item in the hierarchy whose name is location. So what we have now, as you can see, is a list of all the countries in the EMEA region, the children of EMEA. Now I want a list of all the cities where our company has a factory, but just in a specific country, say USA. So I'll edit that formula again. What I need to do here is replace region and EMEA with country sold to, close square brackets, dot, and then USA in square brackets. USA is a value in the country sold to column, which is part of the hierarchy. So now what we've got is the children of USA. By the way, if you're wondering, if I just edit that formula again, if you're wondering why I didn't have to include region in the formula, so putting the region between location and country sold to, because the hierarchy structure is defined in the data model, Excel knows that country sold to is part of the hierarchy, which means I don't have to write out the entire path, making my formula simpler and more efficient. So that's using children with hierarchy. But what if I substitute children with members? I'll just overtype children with members and press enter. Now I get an NA. Using members doesn't work with a hierarchy because members expects to operate on a level, not a specific member within a level. I'm asking for all members of USA, but USA is itself a member. USA is not a level. USA is a member of the country's levels, so it can't have members in this context, hence the NA. Well, I hope the video helped you out and I hope it answered the question. If it did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel to get more Excel tips and tricks. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.